Welcome to People Power in Politics. Hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in depth analysis. That's People Power in Politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holes barred. You are the people, you have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc. A very warm welcome to everyone. We are joined by a very special guest, Mr. Roger Archibald Esquire, the president of We Dakar, the West Indian American Day Carnival Association. Welcome, sir. Good to have you here with us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Our pleasure. So, congratulations on your new appointment as the new president of We Adka. So, Mr. Archibald, can you please share your vision for the organization and the direction you aim to take during your tenure? What are your duties in this new role? Well, I have been around We Adka probably for the better part of three decades. Um, I started my connection with WIADCA back in the early 90s when I just started out practice in law and I was brought on as a legal advisor to the then president and co-founder, the late Carlos Lazama. Mm -hmm. So that's how far I go back Very far. WIADCA. <laughs> yes, indeed. In terms of vision, uh, one of the things that I loved about Carlos is that he truly embraced his culture, which is our culture. Mm -hmm. And he would go to great lengths to make sure that there was a showcase of our culture in America. And I hope to continue that legacy and build on it. Now, part of the difficulties that I think from the past has been lack of proper funding from funding sources, from stakeholders. And in my 34 years as a practicing attorney here in New York, I have made many connections, mm -hmm. whether it be in the business world, the entertainment world, the intellectual world, and the like. And I've already started the process of tapping into that rich resource and many people enjoy what we do on Eastern Parkway. They mm -hmm. enjoy what we do at the back of the museum mm -hmm. because it's the one time of the year that the Caribbean comes alive in America where you see all the rich foods and colors and cultures coming to play in this pageantry on Eastern Parkway. Now, some people are of the view that Eastern Parkway is all that we do, and that is so far from the truth. It's the highlight, it's the pinnacle of our organization, but it's not what all that we do. We educate the up-and-coming generation on their culture. We have programs in schools where we teach pan, playing mm -hmm. steel pan, teach what mass is all about, educate individuals on the true meaning of carnival and the origins of carnival. Carnival really started as a form of rebellion back in the 1700s. And it was a time that the slaves were given an opportunity to express themselves. It usually revolved around harvest time, mm -hmm. when the harvest came to an end. So for example, in Barbados, we call it crop over, but it's the same thing as carnival, right? In the Bahamas, they call it John Cano. Um, in Guyana, they call it Mashramani. And it goes on and on. Every C Caribbean island may have their own spin and take on it based upon who their initial slave owners or slave masters were. So you mentioned earlier a lack of proper funding and fundraising and financial stability are crucial to nonprofits. What strategies do you envision implementing to ensure WIDA cause financial sustainability and cultural growth under your leadership? Well, one of the things that we had in the past and it went away and it came back last year was network television broadcasting. Last year, PIX11 came on board and we negotiated 
a deal with them for two hours. This year, we were able to secure three hours worth of broadcast time. And WABC is also involved, and they'll be doing most of the live streaming, but they will have on air as well. There is revenue to be had and hopefully to be shared from the broadcast rights that are being given to these networks. So that's part of it. Mm -hmm. They are partnering opportunities with corporate sponsors. And when I say corporate sponsors, I mean major national and international brands. I wouldn't name those brands right now mm -hmm. for fear of losing them, but national brands are now excited, and they are excited because the product that we at WIADCA have to demonstrate on the, on the parkway is something that they look at as an untapped gold mine. And that is going to stream revenue into WIADCA that's our lifeblood and will give us the opportunity to provide additional services to the community, whether they be cultural sensitivity training, whether they are expositions at the Brooklyn Museum or other museums showing the rich tapestry of our culture, whether there is training the younger generation to learn how to play pan, how to make the mass costumes, because we have to pass this culture on to mm -hmm. the next generation. So that's a part of my mandate to make sure that that happens, as well as to liaise with all the elected officials in the city of New York, as well as in the state of New York, who are either friendly or want to be friendly to the cause of the Caribbean American citizens that live here. And we do have a large population here in New York. We most certainly do. Okay, so we at CUR serves a diverse community of individuals and talents. And you did mention, you know, passing the culture from one generation to another. So how do you plan to ensure that the organization continues to meet the evolving needs of its members, balancing the older and younger generations, keeping everybody involved? Well, the one thing that youth brings to an organization is energy mm. and new ideas. And couple that with the existing knowledge base of the, I don't want to say older, but I'll say the veterans in the organization. Okay. That's a good marriage. And the, the youth also brings the opportunities to use the technology that's at hand and you very well might see AI at work on Eastern Parkway. And by AI, we're referring to artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that would help us with creating the right matrix, the right balance of old mass and new mass, pan and other expressions of Caribbean music. And when you go to our website, and you'll be able to download certain things that give you the opportunity to look at a resource that goes back over five decades here in the city of New York. So that's what we have in the making, and I intend to enhance that. Excellent. So I'm going to touch on a hot button issue right now of gun violence and other criminal activities in and around the Labor Day Parade. And it has negatively affected attendance and support, even if sometimes something may happen a few miles away, but it is, you know, tagged on to the parade. So how do you plan to address that issue through your role as the new president? I am particularly passionate about this issue. And I'm passionate about this issue because I came to this country as a young boy in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And my siblings and I were on Eastern Parkway every single year through the 70s, the 80s, all the way up until the present day. And what we have consistently experienced is nothing but nationhood, revelry, cultural expressions, some degree of well, who gets the bragging rights? 
which island puts on the best band, mm -hmm. whether they be from Trinidad, Jamaica, Barbados, the Virgin Islands. That's the type of Caribbean excitement that I have known. And I will continue to enforce that the news reports are highly inflammatory. And it seems as though they have some type of a motive. Hidden it, agenda, so Hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you some statistics. The Caribbean Parade is the largest in the city of New York in the state of New York, and in the United States of America. We put on an exposition with participants in excess of three and a half to four million annually. When compared to the other parades in the city, whether it be the St. Patrick's Day Parade, mm -hmm. the Puerto Rican Day Parade, the Dominican Parade, the Gay Pride Parade, they are dwarfed by what we bring to the table. In terms of economic impact, our parade pumps over $300 million in economic activity during the carnival season, and in particular on Labor Day. No other parade in the city of New York generates that type of economic impact. So when you hear we are taxing the police and the overtime and all the other city agencies that are involved in putting forth this parade, just keep in mind we are the largest mm -hmm. and we bring in the most revenue. So it's all about parity. And so being fair. But to get back to the original thrust of your question that dealt with the violence, look at the crime statistics for all the other parades. And when you compare in apples with apples, you'd realize that the West Indian American Carnival is one of the safest large parades in the city of New York. So is it that the parade is not getting the respect it should get? Is it that we, we the car, is not doing a better PR job to see that, you know, these things are out there? Because that's an excellent question. When you have forces in control of the media outlets mm -hmm. and they are minded to tilt a story or spin a story in a particular way, it puts any organization at a disadvantage who doesn't have that bully pulpit. This year, however, with PIX11 and ABC being there, our messengers will be all saying the same thing in terms of parity, fairness, discussing the crime stats, discussing the economic impact that we bring to help change that narrative. And it's my job to make sure that that happens. And I'm up to the task. Good. So building a solid community is essential for any organization. How do you plan to engage with the Caribbean community and the surrounding neighborhoods to ensure their voices are heard and their concerns are addressed effectively, which kind of ties into some of what we just spoke about. Indeed. Um, because we are a nation of islands, mm -hmm. one of the things that we are doing and have already started the process of engaging all of the consul generals of the different islands and we intend to convene individual meetings and joint meetings where every island that's represented in the city of New York would have an opportunity to have their concerns ventilated and to be listened to. I am not saying that every single concern 
necessarily would be satiated, but every concern will be heard mm -hmm. and discussed. And sometimes that's all that's needed. People want to be heard. They e want to be acknowledged. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned at the beginning of our discussion that Labor Day on the, the, on the parkway is the highlight and the pinnacle. So what can we expect for Labor Day 2024? How can we get more information about the upcoming activities? Tell us about all the excitement we can look forward to. Well, the excitement is on the way, and I would dare say I would direct everyone to our website. And our website is Wiadka, W-I-A-D-C-A, followed by Carnival, C-A-R-N-I-V-A-L, dot org. And when you go there, probably in the next coming few days, because it's an ongoing rolling process, mm -hmm. you would see information about registering if you want to become a vendor. We love our vendors because one of the best parts of the Caribbean parade is the Caribbean food, yes. right? The food is what makes it. Yes. So if you like roti, it's there. If you like lambi, it's there. If you like conch, it's there. If you like bacon saltfish, it's there. You want to drink a fresh Don't coconut Don't forget the water? jerk. Jerk chicken. <laughs> it's all there. And it represents all of the islands. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sell your products on Eastern Parkway, go to our website. There's a process. There's a process where you pay a fee. So you're a registered vendor. You, you will be permitted on the parkway to sell what you've got. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. It will also tell you about all the different masks you could play, whether you want to be involved in uh, a king or queen of the band. On the adult side, you want to have your children play Kitty's Carnival, which has always been the highlight of the carnival on a Saturday in the back of the museum because that's how we pass the torch mm -hmm. to the next generation by getting them involved. And if you have children and you have Caribbean blood in you or you wish you did have Caribbean blood in you and you want to be part of the pageantry, Come join us behind the museum on Saturday for Kitty's Carnival. The kids steal the show. Okay. Could you just repeat the website again, Mr. Absolutely. Archibald? It's our acronym, WEADCA, spelled out W I A D C A, at, no, I'm sorry, let me start again. It's WEADCA, W I A D C A, followed by Carnival, C A R N I V A L dot org. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and we look forward to having you back again with more updates as we approach the big day. I look forward to it, Pearl. Thank you so much. You're so very welcome. People power in politics, hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in-depth analysis. That's people power in politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holes barred. You are the people. You have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc.